Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access a Trader.com. A uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody did okay today. Um, really good, aggressive day. Um, a lot of action came in today. A lot of action. We'll get to that uh, in a second. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, again, the only thing we ask is take a second, like the video, share, subscribe. It'll help us out. It'll give me uh, it'll give me some good feeling in my belly. It's the only thing I ask for, and I'll keep on doing my best. Uh, to give you guys unbiased uh, technical analysis on a day-to-day -day basis. So here's where you know here is where a lot of things change. Uh, when you're a brand new trader, your first three to five years, you're trying to kind of find yourself. Okay, we always talk about before you uh, can get into this arena, you have to figure out what's your account size, what's your pain threshold, what type of bills do you have every single month. What kind of trader do you want to be? You want to trade options? You want to trade equity? If you trade equity, do you want to trade small caps, mid caps, uh, large caps, S&P names, down names, or like me, who specializes in uh, mega cap uh, technology? After you finally kind of find yourself over the last, for the first couple of years, then you got to ask yourself, well, how do I want to entertain this market? You know, Do I want to be uh, an intraday trader? Am I want to be an overnight momentum trader? Do I want to swing stocks? Do I want to be, uh, um, you know, I want, do I want to sell premium? Do I want to buy premium? Do I want to trade Forex, E-minis? Like, what do I want to be? Like, what's my personality? Uh, and all these things are, you know, kind of your right of passage as a trader. That's why it takes such a long time to really be comfortable in your own skin. However, once you hit a certain threshold, and, you know, that year is probably year 8, 10, 12, somewhere around that area, you start realizing what you've done wrong through the first X amount of years, and you try to eliminate that. We, we you know, we kind of go over that uh, pretty much on a daily basis in the webinar, and, you know, we talk about this a lot uh, on the nightly video. And the one thing that I can't show you possibly how to do, right? I can show you, here's the pivot, here's our, you know, here's our uh, max pain, Here's our measured potential, right? This is what has to happen, blah, 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 and the moving parts. That I can show you. The one thing I can't show you is experience. And that experience is screen time. Hours and hours and tens of thousands of moments uh, that are you know, combined and spit out and kind of you watching the same movie play out over and over and over again. And the one thing, unlike a lot of people, you know, a lot of people use social media for ideas or to follow their favorite trader. I, I use Twitter, especially Twitter uh, or X. Always be Twitter to me. I use it as a barometer, okay? I use it as a gauge for sentiment. Uh, the more fear I have in a downward market, I know there's more fear to come. The more exuberance and the more excitement I see in front of me, I know, well, there's a good chance at some point the musical chair game is going to end. And what I saw over yesterday, and the market was closed yesterday, you know, I went online and I, and I looked at, you know, the NVIDIA posts and the SMCI posts. And once you start seeing the things moon this and moon that, we're going here, you're going there, I start to say to myself, we already went there. You already went to the moon and back, the moon and back, the moon and back like three times. Don't you even understand this is already, you're, you've already accomplished this? But no, we want more, right? That's the whole retail game. That's the whole... Uh, social media, when you know GameStop goes from sixteen dollars to eighty, people are looking for more, right? I don't want eighty; I want a hundred. I don't want a hundred; I want two hundred. So at, at some point, the retail sentiment gets so exaggerated that you know, after X amount of years trading, that you might be a day or two away from a pretty aggressive reversal. And when I started seeing what I saw yesterday, um, that feeling pretty much got to me very, very quickly last night. Uh, we talked about it in nauseam this morning at Morning Strategy, and I kind of tweeted this out. You know, I tweeted this out at nine o'clock in the morning, right, right before the market opened up. I go, look, we're a day or two away 
from a blow-off pause, not a blow-off top. Okay, I don't believe in blow-off tops because this is a rabid bull market. But I believe we're a day or two away from a blow-off pause. Okay, or excuse me, blow-off pause. All the signs are there. Obviously, if it were one tweet, I'm not going to ex expand to the general public what I mean. But you know, kind of we discussed it in detail in the webinar. And I said, anything that's overextended. And what is overextended? Pretty much everything, right? Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, SMCI, which had an incredible move today to over 1,000, Avago, you know, all these crazy stocks that had massive, massive runs. Leave them alone, right? If you've been watching the broadcast the last four or five days, what have I been saying? I'm looking for a dip in those, in those, in those days. I'm looking for a dip. I'm not buying at this strength. This is getting further away and further away and further away from macro channels. And the further away you go from a macro channel, the higher probability it's finally going to get pulled. And I said, and this is something I've been talking about for years uh, on the YouTube videos, you know, for years in the webinars, okay? Let's leave the overextend this stuff alone, okay? Find the channels coming off the bottom or the middle of the ranges. Remember, if you jump off the first floor and see, and tell me if you ever heard this before coming out of my mouth, if you jump off the first floor, you might get some bumps and bruises, right? And maybe you'll get a bruise knee, whatever the case may be. If you jump off the 12th floor, or in this case, the 21st floor and the 121st floor, how aggressive this rally's been on some of these names, you are going to have a severed head. And, you know, when, when I tweeted this out, you know, I could tell, even though, you know, you're not going to get a lot of responses for it because it's not a sexy post, right? I could feel the eye rolls. Yeah, whatever, man. We're going to the moon, bro. Add backwards. We're going to the moon. And that's all I kind of needed to see. So, I refused to chase anything this morning. I never chase anything anyway. But I said the first part of the, you know, the first part of the, the, the tweet was, let's find stocks coming off the bottom of channels. The only couple of stocks that didn't participate in this whole massive move, right? Well, that, well, three. The third one I don't want to talk about. Very disappointing name. We, everybody knows what I'm talking about. But the one name that never participated in any of this rally was AMD. Again, talk about a stock coming off the bottom. This damn thing, I don't know what it was today, but this damn thing, right from the word go, just went absolutely out of its mind, okay? Out of its mind. And there was no news. Uh, options market was coming in incredibly aggressive. The 170, the 175, the 180 weeklies, absolutely went nuts, okay? Another name that, if you guys remember in the last video, I was like Amazon, right? Amazon has not participated. Well, what happened? Same kind of move today. Uh, as uh, AMD, now, not as aggressive, but same type of move. Where they were coming for the 185s, the 190s, and 200s for July and August. So you kind of saw a rotation going into the stocks that didn't participate for a long, long time, and they really rocketed them today. And and they kind of held serve for the majority of the day. So I figure, okay, there might be money coming out of the Nvidia's, but nothing really happened yet. The, of the Nvidia's, of the Avagos of the world of the SMCIs of the world, and we might possibly get a nice little rotation. So we got that rotation, right? Very, very aggressive moves in those names. But the second part of the equation came, and this is where we really took advantage was, we started seeing softness, not in the semiconductors yet, but we started seeing softness in Apple. Now, why is Apple important? Well, Apple's one of the biggest weighing on names uh, in the NASDAQ 100. So we saw Apple started getting hit. And then we saw Microsoft starting to get hit. And then we started seeing, right, Google getting hit off the top, right? And then the semiconductors started getting hit. Look at, you know, look at AMAT, right? Look at AMAT. Look at Avago, right? Look at Avago. Look at, um, you know, any anything off the top. But the key was, the key was, and even SMCI, SMCI had that huge move pre-market, huge, huge move, uh, went up to 1,014 and then once everything started cracking, you kind of knew that the, the tweet that I sent out and obviously the preparation that we had in the webinar, I knew we had a shot, okay? I knew we had a shot at a reversal. Maybe you're not going to catch everything, but the one that I talked about, the one that I wanted was obviously NVIDIA. It wasn't Apple that pulled the market. It wasn't all the other semiconductors that pulled the market. It was NVIDIA. And when you look at what we did today, and this is pretty much, you know, pretty much the case of why experience matters, right? Like really why experience is a very, very big deal. 
you kind of went through this movie, you know, 10, 15, even 20 years ago, I would have got caught because I didn't believe the market was ever going to end. I didn't believe during the dot-com craze, I was ever going to have a situation that the market was going to backtest and never recover for the next couple of years. I didn't believe that. So when you're a trader and you never go through that, you're going to give back two or three weeks, maybe a month worth of performance in an hour if, you, if you've never went through it. But the fact that I've went through it a dozen times probably, and I finally figured out, hey, idiot, maybe you shouldn't stop, you know, maybe you shouldn't, you know, go ahead and keep on pushing into the well and start looking at these stocks that, you know, 20% away from their natural pivot. At some point, you become smart. And look, if you get punched in the face over and over and over again, I would say by the 38th time, you got a freaking duck, don't you? And that's what trading is. Over the course of the years, you're getting punched in the face, punched in the face, punched in the face. And then you wake up one day and you say, well, wait a minute, moron, learn to duck. The punch is coming. You've been getting punched nonstop. Move your head. And that's exactly what happens. And that's when you take that next level emotionally, right? Technically, as a trader, you start omitting things, omitting things that have been dangerous to your career. All these pitfalls that you've been seeing and stepping on and all these grenades throughout the years, you start to learn to avoid them. And not only did we avoid them today, man, we really took advantage. So here was NVIDIA. Uh, we caught NVIDIA twice today, one from, one from the 38 level into the 36 initial move. But this was the big one right here. 136, if it builds below, can flush. And that was the, the beginning of the end for the semiconductors, or just for the NASDAQ for the day. And, you know, you, SMCI got destroyed. And here is NVIDIA, right? Here is NVIDIA. And again, I apologize. E-Signal has a still reset. But here is NVIDIA, right? Let me just make this a little bigger here. So here is the 36, the initial move on 36 at the rising support. And once it lost the 36, this thing was just got absolutely murdered. Um, my lowest cover was 32 and a half into the five day, but it went through the five day and traded all the way down to this 29 level. And a lot of names got hit as well. Now, the key going into tomorrow is, and here's a very, very open and honest question. Is this something to be worried about, concerned about if you are a long bias trader or or you know or a long bias investor. Long term I would say no. Right. Long term I would say no. Even if there is a follow through tomorrow, and I'll tell you one thing, the market has been so resilient, especially in this last move up, any technical damage has been reversed right back the next day. But again, like I say in every single video, don't we need, you know, don't we deserve to put ourselves in the position to at least to understand, to acknowledge that a day two could potentially happen, right? That's a very, very honest question. So going into tomorrow, of course I'm watching NVIDIA, right? Of course I'm watching NVIDIA for a day two move. But again, I don't think the day two move is going to be a $10, $12 move, okay? But I think a move from the five to the 10 day moving average could be very, very feasible, right? A day name like Apple, Apple, again, first close below the five day moving average. Can it get down to the 10 day again? I'm not saying these are gonna be huge moves. They're not. If you're an investor, who cares a couple of bucks, right? You're in it for the long term. But for a trader from the five day to the 10 day, it's still a couple of bucks, right? Look at a name, for example, like AMAT, right? AMAT today closed below the five. Now, what happens if AMAT confirms the five? Well, it goes down to the 10. That's another five dollars in the name. Look at a name like Ivano, right? Big, big reversal today, stopped at the five day. Then what happens if we lose the five day? There's like 25, 30 points in that as well. So the key is, yes, as much as we understand that the bull market is there, it's super aggressive, you got to be prepared on both sides of the market. Because if not, all those euphoric posts to the moon, to the moon, to the moon, look, what happens when that truck runs you over? And the only thing you're asking is, will anybody get the license plate of the number, which is of the truck that just ran me over? That's the point. If you're a long-term investor, my channel does nothing for you, okay? We are active traders. We are looking at the day-to-day we're not trying to close the, you know, trying to guess the closing price. We're trying to win our interval. And the whole point is when you are an active trader, you have to trade both sides of the market. You have to anticipate both areas of interest potentially confirming. Because if you don't, like I said earlier, all those people, including myself, especially earlier in my career, I said, there's no way this market is ever going to reverse down, right? The market is untouchable, right? There's nothing that can happen. It's a Teflon market. And you look down in an hour, you gave back three weeks worth of your profits. Don't be naive. It happens all the time. So obviously, Avago, I'm watching tomorrow to the downside. Apple, NVIDIA, see if they can give a day two, right? 
see if they, there's a day two. However, there's a flip side to this. Let's say the market starts to rally and the whole notion of, hey, maybe rotation comes from the high flying names that already rallied. Well, back into an AMD, right? I have to watch AMD to the upside tomorrow. What happens if we get a day two? Can we get a push into this 170 to 171 area? Can we get a day two push on Amazon, considering how strong it was today, reclaiming the 10-day moving average? Can we get a day two on that as well? So that's the whole point of being a professional trader, understanding both scenarios are real, both scenarios are possible. And the question is, and it, well, it, or the approach is, don't guess, don't try to, you know, try to be the smartest person in the room. Don't anticipate. Let the market, let the price action dictate to you what happens next. We're prepared on both sides of the market. Let's see what happens tomorrow. Let's see which side confirms. But the most important part is humble yourself before the market humbles you. And you think something that potentially will never happen in your mind happens in your mind times 10 and you go on top. Don't be that guy. Understand the ramifications before the bell rings. Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless, and I will see you all in the field tomorrow. Take care.